as well for me. Okay, good day again to everyone and welcome to this uh, tutorial lesson. So we are still in our series of uh, classes of lessons and um, it's now becoming a regular uh, activity in our R club. So it's in such that every Wednesday we, we have a presentation and a data analysis with R. And today I'm going to tutor you on odds ratios analysis. This is an important aspect of uh, data analysis. And most of the time we have categorical data and want to see the relationship between this categorical data. And when you have a, a variable which is binary, you can easily um, uh, check the relationship with another variable, another binary variable, and be able to draw some conclusion about the relationship between them, whether it is statistical significant or, or not. And odds ratios uh, are often used in epidemiological studies and um, to check the uh, deficiency of a drug. So it's possible to test whether a drug is really efficient in the treatment of a disease. For instance, by uh, administering the treatment to a certain number of people, and then uh, you have a reference category of people with a placebo administration, and you can compare now the, the results between these two groups and be able to draw some conclusion on whether the drug is efficient or not. And um, so we are going to check the relationship between binary variables using this odd ratio. And uh, before we really start, we need to know some terms to understand the meaning of some terms, like the odds, what's actually the meaning of uh, the odds. Uh, I think, let me see if I can make it a bit larger, okay. Let me use a pointer. Good. So what's the meaning of the odds? Actually, the odds is the probability of an event occurring divided by the probability of the event not occurring. So if you have, let's say the probability of event occurring is P. So the probability of that event not occurring is one minus P. You know, the sum of the probability should give one. So this one minus P could also be represented by Q. So you have P divided by, by Q, P being the probability of the event occurring and Q being the probability of the event not occurring. So that is the meaning of the odds. And we can take an example to really uh, see what it really means. Let's say uh, you have a disease and you people administer with two treatments, ranitidine and cimetidine and want to check the occurrence of disease with respect to these two drugs. So um, we look at this table, the contingency table, you have a binary variable, yes, no, and then ranitidine, cimetidine. So you had 44 people with reoccurrence of the disease when they were treated with ranitidine, and then 199 with no recurrence of the disease. And you have some and similar with the cimetidine. So uh, how could we get the, the odd ratios? It's, it is very simple. You calculate the probability of recurrence uh, for people treated with uh, ranitidine, which is just A divided by, uh, by the total, that is A plus B. So 44 divided by 243, you get the probability of recurrence with ranitidine. And the probability of non-occurrence is just, you can take one minus, the 0 0.18 or just take 199 divided by that sum again and you have this value so what is the odds the odds is actually the probability of the recurrence of the disease with ranitidine so that is, that is for people who are treated with ranitidine divided by the odds of recurrence for people um for the people the, the odds of non reoccurrence, I mean, of uh, uh, people who are treated with the ranitidine. So we had 0 
So you can do the same thing with the uh, simetidine. That is uh, for this table. If you take simetidine, you also have the probabilities: the probability of occur reoccurrence, a probability of non-reoccurrence. Then you divide, and also get 0 0.1, 0 0.41. And uh, what is then the odds ratio? The odds ratio is simply the uh, the odds of reoccurrence with ranitidine that we calculated divided by the odds of uh, reoccurrence with simetidine that's 0 0.22 divided by 0 0.41 and then you have 0 0.54. From these results, you can already do some interpretation, even though you cannot say whether it is significant or not. So uh, since the numerator is the reoccurrence when treated with ranitidine, okay? So we interpret it in this way. We'll say the reoccurrence, the odds, the odds of reoccurrence when treated with the ranitidine is 0 0.54 times the odds of reoccurrence with simetidine. So that's how you can interpret it. And you can even draw some conclusion here that uh, it means uh, ranitidine is more efficient in the treatment of that disease with because you can see the factor. The factor is a decimal point. So it, that's the reduction, really. And we are going to see in the next uh, slide. And uh, another quick way of getting the odd ratio is simply by taking the value A divided by B. Because when you take their probabilities, let's take this probability, A divided by the sum, and then divided by B divided by the sum, the denominators will cancel automatically, and then you have A over B. So if you are getting the, the odds, just simply take the frequency of yes divided by the frequency of B to get the odds of reoccurrence when treated with antidine, and you do the same thing with simetidine. Then you divide, when you divide them, automatically when you divide and you want to multiply, you invert, you invert your fraction. So you have that AD divided by BC, and you put the values you have, the same result that you had up there. So when you look at the table, AD is what the diagonal here, this is the diagonal AD divided by BC. So if I want to get the odd ratio, I'll just say AD divided by BC to get this result. It becomes much more easier. And um, how do we test the hypothesis? Which hypothesis do we test here? And uh, you are testing the null hypothesis that the odd ratio is equal to one. The odd ratio is equal to one, meaning that the odds are similar. That's why when you divide them, they will cancel out and then you have one. Then the alternative hypothesis is that the odd ratio is not equal to one. So this is the two-tail test. If it were a one-tail test, we could say the odd ratio is greater than one, or we could say the odd ratio is less than one. Now, uh, how do we interpret uh, the confidence interval after calculation, how do you interpret the 95 confidence uh, interval? Normally, the confidence interval gives us the limits within which the population odds ratio will fall. Let's say, for instance, if the confidence interval is between 0 0.35 and 0 0.83, that's the lower limit is 0 0.35, the upper one is 0 0.83. It means the population odds ratio falls within this range. And when you look at the range, one, it does not fall between this range. So when one does not fall between the range, it means that it is significant. The statistical test is significant. And you can even see the p-value already uh, very less than 0 0.05. And um, of course, the interpretation that we just set, 0 0.54 times the odds on simetidine. Uh, then you can also interpret the other way around with the reduction. That is, you take that 0 0.54, like you have here, 1 minus 0 0.54. It will give you a value, another fraction. You multiply by 100, you have 46%. And how do you interpret? You simply interpret that the odds 
of reoccurrence of uh, ranitidine reduces by 46% compared to the odds of reoccurrence with cimetidine. Okay, so you can then see the percentage of reduction if you, those people are treated with uh, ranitidine. That is the reduction of the occurrence of the disease. So we are going to, if there is no question, uh, is there any question? If there's no question, we're going to the practical session now. And I'm going to share the screen. Hello. Hello. Yes, hello. I'm uh, Dr. Tongle. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always have problem of interpretation, interpretation here after your hypothesis testing. Yeah. Uh, you see, I think, uh, so you did it manually or you did it uh, uh, with uh, you test with uh, with R or something like that. That uh, that p value or something like that. Yes, the p value. Since uh, we don't we don't longer use a uh, manual calculation again. This is automatically yeah. done with uh, with R. The machine does it, so uh, we don't need to bother with it because the machine will calculate it, even the confidence interval. Yes, mm -hmm. that's uh, that's my problem. So we cannot do statistics in class. You cannot see in class with uh, with a chalk on the board, and then you, you just come out. Uh, you go. You, you cannot get the, 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 Is there any table for uh, this odds ratio? Something or something like that. For the odds ratio, I'm, I'm talking yeah. of that. Uh, of I'm talking of uh, statistical table as we we usually in our time we, we have statistical table. Mm -hmm. Is there any statistical table with this one? Um, uh, with the odds ratio. To get the odds ratio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there? Yeah. No, for the odd ratio, it's uh, you don't need. There's no need for. There's no statistical table because it's simple calculation, as you have seen here. Okay, it's simple calculation. But for the the p value, of course, use a statistical table to get it, and for the the, the confidence interval too. Yes, for the confidence interval too. Yeah. Okay. There are table for it. If you like, I can share it even later. There are, ta later. There are table for it. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Let's let me share the screen for the practical session. Okay. Now everybody can see my R studio. So the first thing is to clean your environment. I've cleaned the console. I clean everything that I have. Can clean everything. Then uh, we already have a there is an instruction script that I want to import. Instruction script is found somewhere. Uh, let me get the instruction script. Okay. Uh, this is 18. So uh, I'm reporting the instruction script here. So this is it. Normally on your script, you should have the title. Mm. The title, then the library that you are going to load the packages. So we are going to use one package, and that package is epi. So I load the package, epi. There are several packages to calculate odd ratio. So we are going to, I, I cannot spend any time showing all those packages, but uh, you can go on the net, you get them. And if you want, I can still share those uh, packages. There are so many. Then uh, you also use an R-based function. I'm going to use an R-based function too to get the, the odds ratio. And uh, that R, R uh, function is simply the Fisher. Let me just type it so that you get it, the Fisher. Test. That's a function that you use. Okay. Let me load the package with Control Enter. You load the package. The next thing is to load your data and uh, and store it in an object. Let's say an object is data. 
And it's a CSV, dot CSV, dot uh, CSV. And then the next thing is your directory. Uh, let me just go and copy the directory very fast here. Everybody can do it. So I've copied the directory from my hard drive and I paste it. Okay. I change this into backslash very fast. Backslash. Then the next thing, I check my data, the name of my data set. I mean, this is the data set uh, was data, data GMO. So I'll add data GMO here. Data GMO. And I add the extension CSV. And I run the code. The data is important, you can see it here. Okay. Uh, then I could look at the structure of the data. That's the first thing. Look at the structure of your data. So when I load it, you can see my data at the console here. It has three variables, and all are categorical variables. And now this study intended to check the financial risk. That's this variable. So this is like a, could say outcome variable to check the financial risk with respect to gender and animal feed. That's the feed that was administered to, let's say, to the cattle and so on. And you see they are categorical. We, we can check the levels. If they are binary, then we can easily use odd ratio to analyze it. I want to say something. Odd ratio is mathematically is used in logistic regression. That's the parameter used in logistic regression. In uh, when we shall have a lesson on regression, we shall talk about it more. So uh, I want to check the different levels. It's easy. I could uh, use factor, factor. Then I check first with, uh, let's check first with the financial risk. Okay. Then I'll pipe in. But to pipe in, I need this um, package. I'll explain. This package uh, dplyr. In order to use the piping operator. So I've loaded the package dplyr. Then this is the piping operator. And the advantage of the piping operator is that you can chain many functions together. So what it does is that it takes the result from this function and pass it to the next function. So I'm passing it to n levels, n levels. So I want to see the number of levels that I have in the financial risk. So at the console, you see, I'm having two levels. It's a categorical variable with two levels. And if I want to see the names of the classes, it has two classes, that is none and yes. Okay, uh, let's say we are interested on, on two, on these two variables, that is gender, that's sex. We can also do it for sex, okay? Uh, let's now check the contingency table with those two variables, data, financial risk, and then data, and sex. So we have the contingency table here. For those two, so we have crossed those two variables. This is the categories for financial risk, the category for female and male respondents. I prefer that we interchange. If you are doing a ratio analysis, you should interchange and the variable of high interest should come as Y inside the command. So I will run it, this is it. That's the variable of high interest as we want to see the financial risk, yes. And then no financial risk with respect to female, with respect to male. So these are the frequencies that we are having. But there is another problem here. The yes category, the yes category is here as the second level. So we can interchange it with none so that it comes at the first level so that we get the odds of yes. That's the odds of financial risk compared with the odds of non-financial risk. 
and it's very easy so you will simply use this code uh, financial risk and here use factor function i want to relevel that variable financial risk data financial risk and use the function the argument levels levels see then you write the levels inside so i'm starting with yes levels and then next non-level i have to put them in quotes because they are characters or character string so i put them in quotes i run so we can check again the table to see whether we have interchanged them and you can see that yes comes now first which is not great for our analysis let us now test the relationship between sex and financial risk so want to see if they can be the relationship between these two in other words if probably male respondents they have a higher financial risk or not and uh, vice versa uh, just a minute let me check this let me see something okay solve this problem so we can use fisher test and we applied it to uh, we first write sex then the next data financial risk we run the command and we have the results here at the console how do we interpret it the interpretation is uh, easy we are going to interpret three things there are three things that are very important in the interpretation that is the odds ratio itself the 95 percent confidence intervals and then the p-value let's start with the odds ratio so we'll look at the odds ratio uh, let me show the table again you can see the table so when you look at the odds ratio see that 0 0.32 so we can say that you can see here that the female comes first so we are comparing female to male so we can say that the odds of financial risk the odds of financial risk for female is 0 0.32 times the odds of financial risk for male so in other words the the financial risk for from female is uh, lower compared to the financial risk for male and another way you can define it using percentages the other way around what do you do you take one minus minus 0 0.32 so you get 0 0.68 you want to get the reduction so how do you interpret you put in percentage you have 68 percent so we can say uh, the odds of financial risk reduces for females reduces by 68 percent compared to the the odds of financial risk for for males so that's how you interpret Please. It. yeah yes. uh, uh... In my screen, I don't see how uh, you are calculating the uh, the odd ratio. It is blocked. It's some like blocked something like that. I don't know. Uh, the error does not work again. You mean at the console? Yeah, yeah. My console just uh, it's just at the uh, at the at the level of uh, this thing of um uh, the contingency table. It, is, it has not evolved since then. Ah. Uh. Is everybody having the same problem? Yeah, I'm having the same problem. You can see the console. I mean, I've seen the console, but it, it is at the level of uh, the contingency table. Yeah, that you can see. The screen has freeze. It has freeze at the level of the contingency table. Ah, let me check. Let me check what is wrong there. Hmm. Let me see what is wrong. Let me clear again. Let me clear the console. Okay, let me clear the console. Uh, let me run the table. You check. Can you see the table, the contingency table at the console now? It is not my way. Mm. I think you should stop the sharing and then reshare it again. I see, I see. Oh, yeah, 
ഓക്കെ 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 ലക്സി Yes. Is it okay now? Yes. Mm, okay, great. So, this is the contingency table that we have, right? And um, yes. we are calculating the odd ratio. So, we have run the Fisher uh, test function, and this is the result that we have, 0.32. So, how do we interpret it? It's simple. Since the, the numerator here yeah, is female, so it is female compared to, to males. So the interpretation is, is easy. You are comparing female with respect to, to males. So you simply say uh, the, the odds of financial risk for females is 0.32 times the odds of financial risk for males. Or you can use the percentage. So you subtract 0.32 from one. Because when you sum probability, you should give one. So when you subtract, you have, let me run it. You have 0.68. So take it as a catch. And how do you interpret? You would simply say the odds of financial risk for, for females, that's for females, is 68 or reduces uh, by 68% compared to the odds of financial risk for, for males. Now, the next thing that you need to check is the, the confidence interval, okay? To see whether this is really significant or not. When you look at the confidence interval, the limits are uh, all decimals. They are all values with decimal that is 0 0.14, 0 0.68. And a, the value of one doesn't fall within this interval, okay? Since one doesn't fall within this interval, it means the test is significant. And you can even see it also in the P value, which is far less than 0 0.05, that is alpha. So without even seeing the p-value, you can use the confidence interval to say whether it is significant or not. And how do you know it? It is when one does not fall within this interval. If it was an interval where you could have the value of one, then it would say that this is not statistically significant. Now, you can also use the, the function two by two from uh, the AP package, two by two function, and then you pass into this function, the same variable I'm copying to paste. Okay, I paste, I forgot D here. So when you run it, you have more comprehensive result. So look at the console here. And you see your event, your outcome is the yes, the yes, okay? That is the financial risk. And you are comparing female with, um, the females are compared with males, as you can see here. And you can also get the, the, what you call the probabilities for each category. So for females is 0.35, for males is 0.62. That is, how do you calculate that? 21 divided by the sum. 21 divided by the sum for female. Then for the seven divided by the sum for male to get the probabilities. Then you check the odds ratio. What is most important here is the, this line of code or this line of, um, of results. When you look at this odds ratio, it's the same like what we had here, 0 0.323. You go down, you see it's similar. And you interpret in a similar way, you have the confidence interval here. Then you have the, the exact p-value, which is also here. So, so that's how you run odds ratio with R. And uh, it's quite easy and very, very important when you are dealing with binary variables. And you find binary variables most of the time in questionnaires when you ask questions and they are giving answers like yes and no. 
how many, uh, for instance, if you ask people uh, if they have seen, say, birds, they can answer yes or no. You may have options of yes and no. What season do they see this bird? Dry, wet. So uh, in most interview, you have this uh, type of uh, data and also in epidemiological studies. Uh, we have ended and it's now open for any question.